Hello, I'm KM, an Associate Professor in the School of Life Sciences, CUHK. The third lecture in our course of Introduction to Environmental Science is about population and resources. One of the key topics of human sustainability focuses on resources that we have to maintain us to live on Earth. In this lecture, we explore the issues of population explosion, following with resources and genetically modified foods. In the first video, we focus on population or population explosion. Three parts we would like to discuss. One, dynamics of population growth. Two, human population. And three, the situation in Hong Kong with in-class discussions. A typical growth curve of population without limits is exponential growth and called a J-curve until it's grown beyond the carrying capacity after a bit of overshooting. Population size would die back down below the carrying capacity and would bounce back again. Over time, population size reaches equilibrium and population dynamics are controlled by several external factors such as foods and predators in addition to the carrying capacity. We have a formula to measure such relationship with T is time, R is growth rate, N is population number. So dN over dT equals to Rn. We have the change of number in time equals to the rate of increase in time number. Here is the logistic growth of S of sigmoid curve controlled by the carrying capacity. A population size over time will reach the S shape to be under the K selected or carrying capacity controlled manner. Such S shape is controlled by longer generation time, later sexual maturity, and fewer young, such as elephant. It is also controlled by reproductive rate, such as high fertility. How about human beings? To survive on Earth, there are different strategies for us. Let's guess which one is which. Here in a graph with four curves of total lifespan over time in the x-axis and survival rate in log scale in the y-axis. Yellow part is the, in the middle is the reproductive period, started with the dependency period. A, with a high survival shift until after the reproductive period and die off quickly. B, dies off gradually over time. C, dies easily in the dependency period becomes stable during reproductive period and dies off quickly at the end. For D, the population came out very high, but drops quickly until reproductive period, but remain unchanged. I would say A is for animals like human and whales. B, birds like seagulls. C for deer. Pattern D for turtles, clams, and widths. The data, as shown here, demonstrated a predator-prey cycle of the populations of two animals, Canada lynx and snowshoe rabbit. The population of lynx as shown with dark circle, which prey on the rabbit as shown with open circle, as you can see, over time from 1850 <coughs> to 1930, as the lynx lumber dropped, the rabbit lumbers increased. Over decades, you can see such relationship maintained, and sufficient lumbers of rabbit could maintain the lumbers of lynx in each cycle of around a decade. 
Here are the two questions I have for you. One, which factors might disturb such relationship? Two, what other factors control the rabbit's population in addition to its predator, which is Canada lynx? Think about it. How about human population? This diagram showed the population explosion from 150 million from 1 AD to 2020 with 8 billion. <clears throat> you may consider the figure here with demographic transition over time from stage one of pre-industrial, stage two trans-industrial, stage three industrial, and stage four post-industry. The total population is a dark line with high birth and also high death rate under harsh condition. Gradually decreased at stage two as death rate declined. Stage three, the birth rate also declines and as both death rate and birth rate decline, total population should be saturated, perhaps with a fertility rate of 2.1 per mother. Looking back to the estimated population of 100 million in 800 BC, population doubling time was very slow, up to 4,200 years. Moved quicker to 600, slowed back to AD 1200, and the population grew to 400 million, going up to uh, 6,400 million or 6.4 billion, the doubling time drops rapidly. It is estimated that the doubling time could become slower. Human population may grow to 8.9 billion. What contribute to the rapid reduction of doubling time? Here, when doubling time is shorter than lifespan, human population could have a very fast growth. Looking back with historical stages, old stone to new stone ages, even with agricultural revolution, improved irrigation system roughly 5,000 years ago, until 1,000 years ago and the industrial era came two, 300 years ago, our human population shoot up incredibly. Of the post-industrial era, the problem of human population become uncontrollable. According to Tom Mathers, population exists food supply and is kept in check by war, famine, or disease. It then drops below the food supply as the population recovers, the cycle continues. However, there are also other issues like unemployment, pollution, resource depression, poverty, exploitation, and oppression. So, Marx's will on the cause of poverty, environmental degradation due to oppression, exploitation, class struggles, and wars. The question being asked is how technology can increase carrying capacity for humans. Mother's time had no such consideration or technology. Food supply decreased, increased drastically in the last 200 years to maintain human populations. Green revolution, gene revolution, and renewable resources are the key technological fixes. Is population growth causing more crime? Unemployment, inequality is the problem. 20% rich consume 80% of the resources. Social, injust social justice and global justice are badly needed. Coming into Hong Kong according to the Census and Statistics Department, Hong Kong's population is projected to grow up to around 8.7 million by 2031. However, the planning department conducted a study on Hong Kong's population capacity in 2003, and the study suggested that the existing development areas in Hong Kong could only 
subject to certain constraints, basically accommodate a total population of 8.23 million. A summary of Hong Kong's population level and population capacity has been shown in here. Hence, it is important to have sustainable solutions to address such pressing needs for more land area as Hong Kong approaches a population level of 8.7 million in 2031, especially in alleviating housing shortage and related issues. Here are the in-class discussion topics. Number one, should Hong Kong be able to increase its population to 10 million? Our caring capacity and population policy. What could stop us from growing? Is one child policy acceptable? Why China change its one child policy? How can we stabilize our population or should we? What factors affect your desire to give birth? Could we have a birth draft? Last question. Could population growth improve economic sustainability? I hope you have enjoyed this video and find the discussion topics useful in helping you to understand the situation of population explosion and what we can do to help. Bye-bye.